Love That Dog by Sharon Creech Jack Room 105 Miss Stretchberry September 13th I don't want to because boys don't write poetry. Girls do. September 21st I tried. Can't do it. Brain's empty. September 27th I don't understand the poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens and why so much depends upon them. If that is a poem about the red wheelbarrow and the white chickens, then any words can be a poem. You've just got to make short lines. October 4th Do you promise not to read it out loud? Do you promise not to put it on the board? Okay. Here it is, but I don't like it. So much depends upon a blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road. October 10th. What do you mean, why does so much depend upon a blue car? You didn't say before that I had to tell why. The wheelbarrow guy didn't tell why. October 17th. What was up with the Snowy Woods poem you read today? Why doesn't the person just keep going if he's got so many miles to go before he sleeps? And why do I have to tell more about the blue car splattered with mud speeding down the road? I don't want to write about the blue car that had miles to go before it slept. So many miles to go. In such a hurry. October 24th. I am sorry to say I did not really understand the Tiger Tiger Burning Bright poem, but at least it sounded good in my ears. Here is the blue car with the tiger sounds. Blue car, blue car shining bright in the darkness of the night. Who could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky? I could see you in the night. Blue car, blue car shining bright. I could see you speeding by like a comet in the sky. Some of the tiger sounds are still in my ears, like drums beat, beat, beating. October 31st. Yes, you can put the two blue car poems on the board, but only if you don't put my name on them. November 6th. They look nice typed up like that on blue paper on a yellow board. But still don't tell anyone who wrote them, okay? And what does anonymous mean? Is it good? November 9th. I don't have any pets, so I can't write about one. And especially I can't write a poem about one. November 15th. Yes, I used to have a pet. I don't want to write about it. You're going to ask me why not, right? November 22nd. Pretend I still have that pet? Can't I make up a pet? A different one? Like a tiger? Or a hamster? A goldfish? Turtle? Snail? Worm? Flea? November 29th. I like those small poems we read today. When they're small like that, you can read a whole bunch in a short time, and then in your head are all the pictures of all the small things from all the small poems. I liked how the kitten leaped in the cat poem, and how you could see the long head of the horse in the horse poem, and especially I like the dog in the dog poem, because that's just how my yellow dog used to lie down, with his tongue all limp and his chin between his paws, and how he'd sometimes chomp at a fly, and then sleep in his loose skin, just like that poet Miss Valerie Worth says in her small dog poem. December 4th. Why do you want to type up what I wrote about reading the small poem? It's not a poem, is it? I guess you can put it on the board if you want to, but don't put my name on it in case other people think it's not a poem. December 13th. I guess it does look like a poem when you see it typed up like that. But I think maybe it would look better if there was more space between the lines, 
like how I wrote it the first time. I like the picture of the yellow dog you put beside it, but that's not how my yellow dog looked. January 10th. I really, really, really did not get the pasture poem you read today. I mean, somebody's going out to the pasture to clean the spring and to get the little tottery calf while he's out there and he isn't going to be gone long and he wants you? Who is you to come to? I mean, really. And you said that Mr. Robert Frost, who wrote about the pasture, was also the one who wrote about those snowy woods and the miles to go before he sleeps. Well, I think Mr. Robert Frost has a little too much time on his hands. January 17th. Remember the wheelbarrow poem you read the first week of school? Maybe the wheelbarrow poet was just making a picture with words, and someone else, like maybe his teacher, typed it up, and then people thought it was a poem because it looked like one typed up like that. And maybe that's the same thing that happened with Mr. Robert Frost. Maybe he was just making pictures with words about the snowy woods and the pasture, and his teacher typed them up, and they looked like poems, so people thought they were poems. Like how you did, with the blue car things and reading the small poems thing. On the board typed up, they look like poems, and the other kids are looking at them, and they think they really are poems, and they are all saying... Who wrote that? January 24th. We were going for a drive, and my father said, We won't be gone long. You come too. And so I went, and we drove and drove until we stopped at a red brick building with a sign and blue letters, Animal Protection Shelter. And inside we walked down a long cement path, past cages with all kinds of dogs, big and small, fat and skinny. Some of them hiding in the corner, but most of them bark, bark, barking, and jumping up against the wire cage as we walk past, as if they were saying, Me! Me! Choose me! I'm the best one! And that's where we saw the yellow dog, standing against the cage, with his paws curled around the wire, and his long red tongue hanging out, and his black eyes looking a little sad, and his long tail wag, wag, wagging, as if he were saying, Me, 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 choose me. And we did. We chose him. And in the car, he put his head against my chest and wrapped his paws around my arm, as if he were saying, Thank you, thank you, thank you. And all the other dogs in the cages get killed dead if nobody chooses them. January 31st. Yes, you can type up what I wrote about my yellow dog, but leave off the part about the other dogs getting killed dead because that's too sad. And don't put my name on it, please. And maybe it would look good on yellow paper. And maybe the title should be You Come Too. February 7th. Yes, it looks good on the yellow paper, but you forgot, again, to leave more space between the lines like I did when I wrote it. That's okay, though. February 15th. I like that poem that we read today, about street music in the city. My street is not in the middle of the city, so it doesn't have that loud music of horns and trucks, clash, flash, screech. My street is on the edge of a city, and it has quiet music most of the time. Wisp, meow, swish. My street is a thin one with houses on both sides, and my house is the white one with the red door. There is not too much traffic on my street, not like in the middle of a city. We play in the yards, and sometimes in the street, but only if a grown-up or the big kids are out there too. And they will shout, car, if they see a car coming down our street. At both ends of our street are yellow signs that say, caution, children at play. But sometimes the cars pay no attention and speed down the road as if they were in a big hurry with many miles to go before they sleep. February 21st. 
That was so great, those poems you showed us where the words make the shape of the thing that the poem is about. Like the one about an apple that was shaped like an apple. And the one about the horse that was shaped like a horse. My brain was pop, pop, popping when I was looking at those poems. I never knew a poet person could do that funny kind of thing. February 26th. I tried one of those poems that looks like what it's about. My Yellow Dog by Jack. March 1st. Yes, you can type up the yellow dog poem that looks like a dog, but this time keep the spaces exactly the same. And maybe it would look really, really good on yellow paper. Maybe you could put my name on it, but only if you want to. Only if you think it looks good enough. March 7th. I was a little embarrassed when people said things to me like, Neat poem, Jack. And how'd you think of that, Jack? And I really, really like the one that you put up about the tree that is shaped like a tree. Not a fake-looking tree, but like a real tree with straggly branches. But I want to know who was the anonymous poet in our class who wrote that. And why didn't he or she want to put his or her name on it? Was it like me, when I didn't think my words were poems? Maybe you will tell the anonymous tree poet that his or her tree poem is really a poem. Really, really, and, and a good poem, too. March 14th. That was the best, best, best poem you read yesterday by Mr. Walter Dean Myers. The best, best, best poem ever. I am sorry I took the book home without asking. I only got one spot on it. That's why the page is torn. I tried to get the spot out. I copied the best poem and hung it on my bedroom wall right over my bed where I can see it when I'm lying down. Maybe you could copy it too and hang it on the wall in our class where we can see it when we are sitting at our desks doing our stuff. I sure like that poem by Mr. Walter Dean Myers called Love That Boy. Because of two reasons I liked it. One, because my dad calls me in the morning just like that. He calls, hey there, son. And also because when I had my yellow dog, I love that dog. And I would call him like this. I'd say, hey there, Sky. His name was Sky. March 22nd. My yellow dog followed me everywhere. Every which way I turned, he was there, wagging his tail and slobber coming out of his mouth when he was smiling at me all the time, as if he was saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for choosing me, and jumping up on me, his shaggy, straggly paws on my chest, like he was trying to hug the insides right out of me. And when us kids were playing outside, kicking the ball, he chased after it, and push it with his nose, push, 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 and get slobber all over the ball, but no one cared because he was such a funny dog, that dog Sky. That straggly, furry, smiling dog Sky. And I'd call him every morning, every morning. Hey there, Sky. March 27th. Yes, you can type up what I wrote about my dog Sky, but don't type up the other secret one I wrote, the one all folded up in the envelope with tape on it. That one uses too many of Mr. Walter Dean Myers' words, and maybe Mr. Walter Dean Myers would get mad about that. April 4th. I was very glad to hear that Mr. Walter Dean Myers is not the sort of person who would get mad at a boy for using some of his words. And thank you for typing up my secret poem, the one that uses so many of Mr. Walter Dean Myers' words, and I like what you put at the top, inspired by Walter Dean Myers. That sounds good to my ears. Now no one will think I just copied because I couldn't think of my own words. They will know I was inspired by Mr. Walter Dean Myers. Don't put it up on the board yet, okay? Is Mr. Walter Dean Myers a live person? And if he is, do you think he could ever come to our city, to our school, to our class? And if he did, we should hide my poem with his words, hide it real good, just in case he would get mad about that. April 9th. No, no, 
No, no, no, no, I can't do it. You should do it. You're a teacher. April 12th. I don't agree that Mr. Walter Dean Myers might like to hear from a boy who likes his poems. I think Mr. Walter Dean Myers would like to hear from a teacher who uses big words and knows how to spell and to type. April 17th. Dear Mr. Walter Dean Myers, You probably don't want to hear from me because I am only a boy and not a teacher, and I don't use big words, and you probably won't read this, or even if you do read it, you probably are way too busy to answer it, let alone do the thing I'm going to ask you, and I want you to know that's okay, because our teacher says writers are very, very, very busy trying to write their words, and their phone is ringing, and the fax is going, and the bills need paying, and sometimes they get sick. I hope you are not sick, Mr. Walter Dean Myers. Or their families get sick, or their electricity goes off, or the car needs fixing, or they have to go to the grocery store, or do the laundry, or clean up messes. I don't know how you find the time to write your words. If you have to do all that stuff, maybe you should get a helper. So what I'm asking you is this. If you ever get the time to leave your house, and if you ever feel like visiting a school where there might be some kids who like your poems, would you ever maybe think about maybe coming maybe to our school? which is a clean place with mostly nice people in it, and I think our teacher, Miss Stretchbury, would maybe even make brownies for you because she sometimes makes them for us. I hope I haven't too much stopped you from doing your writing of words and fixing your car and getting groceries and all that stuff just to read this letter, which probably is taking you maybe 15 minutes, and in that time you could have maybe written a whole new poem, or at least the start of one. And so... I am sorry for taking up your time, and I understand if you can't come to our clean school and read some of your poems to us, and let us see your face, which I bet is a friendly face. My name is Jack. Bye, Mr. Walter Dean Myers. April 20th. Did you mail it? Did he answer it yet? April 24th. Months? It might take months for Mr. Walter Dean Myers to answer my letter? If he answers it? I didn't know until you explained that the letter has to go to Mr. Walter Dean Myers' publishing company that then someone at the publishing company has to sort all the mail, not just my letter, but hundreds and hundreds of letters to hundreds of authors. All that big mess of mail piled up, and someone sorting, sorting, sorting all that mail, and then the letters from Mr. Walter Dean Myers go to him, and maybe he's away, maybe he's on vacation, maybe he's sick, maybe he's hiding in a room writing poems, maybe he's baby sitting his children or his grandchildren if he's married and stuff, or maybe he has to go to the dentist or get that car fixed, or maybe someone died. I really, really hope someone did not die. So if you ask me, it could take him years to get around to answering that letter. So I guess we better just forget about it, not count on it, get it out of our minds, do something else. Forget it. April 26th. Sometimes when you are trying to not think about something, it keeps popping back into your head. You can't help it. You think about it and think about it and think about it until your brain feels like a squashed pea. May 2nd. Yes, you can type up the thing about trying not to think about something, but you'd better leave my name off of it because it was just words coming out of my head, and I wasn't paying too much attention to which words came out when. May 7th. Maybe you could show me how to use the computer, and then I could type up my own words? May 8th. I didn't know about the spell-checking thing inside the computer. It is like a miracle little brain in there, a little helper brain. But I'm a slow typer person. Did you say there is a teaching typing thing in that computer, too? Will it help me type better and faster? Tap, 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 so my fingers can go as fast as my brain? May 14th. I typed this up myself. My sky. 
We were outside in the street, me and some other kids, kicking the ball before dinner, and Sky was chasing, 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 with his feet going every which way, and his tail wag, wag, wagging, and his mouth slob, slob, slobbering, and he was all over the place, smiling and wagging and slobbering and making us laugh. And my dad came walking up the street. He was way down there near the end. I could see him after he got off the bus. And he was walk, walk, walking. And I saw him wave and he called out, Hey there, son. And so I didn't see the car coming from the other way. Until someone else, one of the big kids, called out, Car! And I turned around and I saw a blue car, blue car, splattered with mud, speeding down the road. And I saw Sky going after the ball, wag, wag, wagging his tail. And I called him Sky, Sky. And he turned his head. But it was too late because the blue car, blue car, splattered with mud, hit Sky. Thud, 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 and kept on going in such a hurry, so fast, so many miles to go, it couldn't even stop. And Sky was just there in the road, lying on his side, with his legs bent funny and his side heaving. And he looked up at me and said, Sky, sky, sky. And then my dad was there, and he lifted Sky out of the road and laid him on the grass. And Sky closed his eyes, and he never opened them again, ever. May 15th. I don't know. If you put it on the board and people read it, it might make them sad. May 17th. Okay. I guess. I'll put my name on it. But I hope it doesn't make people feel too sad. And if it does, maybe you could think of something to cheer everybody up. Like maybe with some of those brownies you make. The chocolate ones that are so good. May 21st. Wow. Wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was the best, best, best news ever. I can't believe it. Mr. Walter Dean Myers is really, really, really coming to our school. He was coming to our city anyway to see his old buddy. And he would be honored to visit our clean school and meet with mostly nice kids who like his poems. We are sure lucky that his old buddy lives in town. Wow! May 28th. The bulletin board looks like it's blooming words, with everybody's poems up there on all those colored sheets of paper. Yellow, blue, pink, red, green. And the bookcase looks like it's sprouting books, all of them by Mr. Walter Dean Myers, lined up looking back at us, waiting for Mr. Walter Dean Myers himself to come to our school, right into our classroom. Wow. May 29th. I can't wait. I can't sleep. Are you sure you hid my poem that was inspired by Mr. Walter Dean Myers? I don't want to do any, any, anything to upset him. June 1st. Mr. Walter Dean Myers Day. I never in my whole life ever heard anybody who could talk like that, Mr. Walter Dean Myers. All of my blood in my veins was bubbling, and all the thoughts in my head were buzzing, and I wanted to keep Mr. Walter Dean Myers at our school forever. June 6th. Dear Mr. Walter Dean Myers, 
thank you a hundred million times for leaving your work and your family and your things people have to do to come and visit us in our school and our class. We hope you liked your visit, and we think maybe you did, because you were smile, smile, smiling all over the place. And when you read your poem, you had the best, best, best voice, low and deep and friendly and warm, like it was reaching out and wrapping us all up in a big squeeze. And when you laughed, you had the best, best, best laugh I've ever heard in my life, like it was coming from way down deep and bubbling up and rolling and tumbling out into the air. We hope we didn't ask you too many questions, but we thank you for answering every which one, and especially for saying that you would be flattered to someone use some of your words, and especially if they added a note that they were inspired by Walter Dean Myers. And it was nice of you to read all of our poems on the bulletin board, and I hope it didn't make you too sad when you read that one about my dog Sky getting smushed in the road. And I think you like the brownies too, right? Thank you for coming to see us, Mr. Walter Dean Myers. Inside this envelope is a poem using some of your words. I wrote it. It was inspired by you, Mr. Walter Dean Myers, from your number one fan, Jack. Love That Dog, inspired by Walter Dean Myers, by Jack. Love that dog, like a bird loves to fly. I said I love that dog, like a bird loves to fly. Love to call him in the morning, Love to call him, hey there, Skye. 